Hello everyone, Adap. My name is Sabika. I'm an organizer, activist, editor, campaign strategist, um, but also a poet, a performance poet. I'm the founder of Sarela Haguzar Poetry on the Streets. I perform on metro stations, in narrow lanes, on marketplaces, on roads and crossings, and uh, on ferries on top of the ocean. Um, I started performing uh, in public spaces to subvert the margins that are created in these public spaces and also primarily because cases of mob lynchings of Dalits and Muslims and trans people in India was growing to an unprecedented number. It was hitting very close home and it became essential to rewrite narratives in public spaces. If they could spill blood, if they could spread hatred on roads, it was my duty to go out there and spread love and sing songs of resistance and tell poems about um, revolution uh, in those very streets. Uh, so I won't take much time. I'm going to start with the first poem. It is an anti-war poem. It were, I wrote it when I was in, I think, my undergrad. Um, I wrote it because I remember one army general of a certain country had come out and announced that uh, they are now going to have biodegradable bullets being used for war and training. The bullets will plant themselves in the soil and flowers will grow out of it. And it was bizarre. It was a bizarre idea. And that is why I wrote this poem. It is called Let a Jasmine Grow There Too. So, the army of a place whose people have unlearned love again wants to create bullets that plant flowers where they fall. What a beautiful idea, is it not? What a peace-loving, thoughtful gesture to reflower the places whose flowers you have destroyed. There will be flowers on Syrian ground in Papua and everywhere that bullets are dropped in American school rooms and gay clubs and violent classes in Palestine, in a nursery in Lahore and the streets in Kashmir, in the forests of Chhattisgarh and valleys of the Northeast. Where the bullets are dropped, flowers will grow in the deserted concrete floor, I bet. I bet you have thought of exotic colors that you want the flowers to flaunt, tanager, tuberose, yarrow, lobelia, mescaline, jacaranda. Species of orchids, roses, and those that have unpronounceable biological names will now grow and be reaped by the scarlet blood of those whose bodies will recompose. Even before your biodegradable bullet shells, what an idea to unpluck the unripe, unblossomed bloods of the local glatula so your flower seeds could be dispersed. It will justify all the bullets that you've ever fired. No one, no one will ask you about fallen buildings of Aleppo but applaud you for the new beautification process. No one, no one will utter a word on how many streams turned red in Kashmir, but the aesthetic garden you planted right next to the tulips will not go unnoticed. We, we will understand your message of love. The father will make sure that a bullet shell is planted on the head side of his daughter's grave. I would want you to sprinkle these bullets into the sea so that they implant themselves in the decomposing bodies of those who embrace the sea to escape. My being is like barren land, a conflict zone. My being is like barren land, a conflict zone. Please fire a bullet into my heart and let a jasmine grow there too. And let a jasmine grow there too. The second poem is um, 
is something that I wrote when we were sitting in protest last year against the citizenship laws that my country had just passed. It was, it seemed like a direct attack on uh, my community and we were grieving. And so you realize that when your entire community is pushed against the wall, when you are discriminated against because of your identity, that is fighting that is your only priority. Then heartbreak, romantic love, all personal grief takes a backseat. And that's when I wrote this. And, it, and, and I've seen a lot of fellow activists face this struggle, this this prioritizing of personal grief and trauma over collective grief and collective resistance. And um, so this poem I wrote in Urdu initially is called, um, I can't be a lover right now. I'm going to translate as well. It goes like this. I can't be a lover right now. Nahi mein abhi tumhari nahi ho sakti. नहीं मैं अभी तुम्हारी नहीं हो सकती नहीं मेरी प्यारी भूरी आंखों वाले माशू हम अभी आशिक नहीं बन सकते हम कैसे तुम्हारे लिए प्यार भरी गजलें लिखें जब मेरी स्याही क्रोध से खोल रही है और मेरा कलम सिर्फ आजादी लिखना चाहता है नहीं मैं अभी तुम्हारी नहीं हो सकती क्योंकि याचिकाओं को लिखने में प्रेम पत्रों से ज्यादा लहू लगता है नहीं मैं अभी तुम्हारी नहीं हो सकती मैं कैसे तुम्हारी उंगलियों में उंगलियां उलझाकर बैठ जाऊं जब हमें शाहीन बाग और घंटा घर की औरतों के हाथों में हाथ डालकर साथ देना मैं कैसे तुम्हारी हो जाऊं मैं तुम्हारी बाहों की गर्मी को इनकलाब की रातों से कैसे बदल दू नहीं मैं अभी तुम्हारी नहीं हो सकती क्योंकि इस बार सिर्फ मेरे दिलो जज्बात नहीं मेरी नागरिकता मेरी कौम मेरी आजादी दाव पे लगी है तुम खुद बताओ बदन पे लाठी के निशान नील पड़े पाओ रजगी आंखें खाली पेट के साथ मैं कैसे तुमसे इश्क कर पाऊंगी मैं कैसे तुम्हारी हो पाऊंगी नहीं मैं अभी तुम्हारी नहीं हो सकती ना ही तुम्हारे हिज्र में रो सकती हूँ ना तुम्हारी याद मनाऊंगी क्योंकि शायद हर गम का एक सही वक्त एक सही मौका होता है और आज अभी मुझे आंसू बहाने हैं अपनी मौत पर अपने वजूद की मौत पर नहीं मैं अभी तुम्हारी नहीं हो सकती I can't be a lover right now. No. I cannot write poems for you, my brown eyed lover, not when my ink boils with anger. My pen refuses to write anything but freedom. No. I can't be a lover right now because petitions need more blood than love letters. And I need to hold hands with women of Shaheen Bagh and Ghanta Ghar instead of entangling my fingers with yours. No. I can't be a lover right now because my nights are spent protesting in the cold and I cannot afford to exchange it with the warmth of your embrace. No, I can't be a lover right now and mourn your departure because it's not just my heart that is at risk for my very existence. No, I can't be a lover with with blotty marks on my back, swollen toes, empty stomach. No, I can't be your lover right now. Probably because grief has a right time. Every grief has a right time, an apt moment. And right now, I am grieving the death. The death, the approaching death of my existence, my vajud, no. I can't be a lover right now, my brown eyed lover. I can't be a lover right now. The next poem is something that I wrote during my college, during my university days when uh, we had uh, different curfew hours for boys and girls and there's a lot of discrimination on campus. and. Um, a movement was started. I was also a part of that movement and it was called Break the Cages. 
and started off as a feminist movement. It was an anti-fascist, um, anti-casteist, uh, anti-communalism movement. Um, and I met some really inspirational women while being a part of that, while protesting, while dancing on the streets. And I learned through that movement how to celebrate our resistance and how to form a community. And so this poem is also in Urdu and it's a performance poem, but uh, I'm going to read out the translation and it goes like this. Um, it is about, it is dedicated to the women who came before me, the women who ensured that I am articulate enough to assert. And uh, it is a tribute to all of them. Uh, and it goes like this. Today, I will tell stories of my shamelessness. Today, I will tell stories of my shamelessness and the shamelessness of thousands of women, the locks of whose cages are getting stronger by the day you, who have further tightened the existing ropes around our throat, you who have taken our freedom in a free country, you who have kept the nights to yourselves and evicted us from the ownership of the dark skies who refused to share the treasures, the stars and the galaxies had to offer when we asked. You read out the long chapters from the books of honor and security on instances when we tried to take it on our own, we couldn't manage to return home. You, you who have changed our feet, who have chained our feet and built walls of culture, religion, civilization, nationalism around our being, you who stand guard with conditioned minds, ignoring our very existence at my doorstep and draw lines that can never be crossed. You shout and press hard, you force and try new methods to cage us down and silence us and you talk. And you thought that we, yes, we, with bowed heads year after year, century after century, school after school, neighborhoods after neighborhoods, country after country, nation after nation will wear your chains as if they were anklets. We will take your ropes to be beautiful necklaces, red lipstick will shine atop the locks you've put on our tongues and we, will dance to the rhythms of your oppression. No, 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 no. History has seen days. Tariq mein aisi tariqhein bar bar aayi hain jab warat ne bijliyan ginaayi hain. The history has seen days when women have come down as lightning and destroyed your forests of oppression and misogyny, your imposed standards of sexuality and parameters of honor and shame. We have broken locks and dismantled prison bars and the battle continues every day. We will turn every dagger into pens that will write ropes will be transformed into anklets and then we will dance on the chest of the world on roads markets and homes in front as gatherings libraries and universities and parliaments and senates and then and then you you would have nothing to do but stare at us unemployed as you've been dismissed from the job of guarding our bodies you can now sit on stools of patriarchy and fascism and wait for a bro brigade who will arrive soon and apply the ointment of honor on the wounds of your patriarchy while you judge our characters through our clothes and we. We are witches and granddaughters of shameless women who will keep walking, never surrendering, breaking cages, recla reclaiming the nights, eating the stars. And we, we are witches and granddaughters of shameless women. Hum hamara kya hai? Hum to besharam gunahagar dayan orte hai. Who will keep walking, never surrendering, breaking cages, reclaiming the nights, eating the stars while the moon adorns our forehead or chand hamare mathe par bindi ban kar chamkega or chand hamare mathe par 
bindi bante chante and so i this is going to be my last poem it is about hope and every day i have struggled to keep we have struggled to keep hope alive uh, but as we say uh, hope is what leads the world and um, so this is a poem inspired by the nisha lamaris's poem on hope it is um, it goes like this every morning hope every morning when i wake up my ribs are heavy i carry within them two plants one is that of hope and the other of hopelessness on days i want a one on most days the other but that is the thing about hope which isn't a feeling it isn't a mantra it isn't just the efforts our face muscles take to round our lips and say oh and let it fall at the drop of pee hope hope is labor hard work resistance it is a sitting protest against hopelessness hope does not just smile it is grief and prayers it is placards and that song on loop slogans on the streets and hula hoop to the right beats it is picking up rubble and dead bodies from burned streets and scribbling ideas on used sheets sometimes hope seems to be a privilege but the hope plant within my ribs wants to fight all odds and hope still that on the other side we will come out more compassionate kind dismantling systems of marginalization more love and safe spaces more calm and less races in inclusive work spaces cleaner air and cleaner hearts original news and greater starts the plant of hope has climbed my neck and ribs and reached out to my ears just to whisper inshallah so and with this i want to thank the access now and rights con team for having me here and all of you for listening to these poems which might not be that important but uh it definitely can kindle hope even if in even if it is in one person's heart it would mean the world um to me and so if you have any questions let me know and thank you so much shukriya ada and more power and love and strength and hugs to each one of you thank you